She says, what's your take on having multiple versions of your resume as you are trying to figure out your career path? Ooh, that's a good one. What's your what's your thoughts on that, Tanika? Honey, I tell you, that's what you call a career strategy. That is precisely <laughs> what you should be doing. Yeah, that's something I definitely coach with my clients all the time. So you want to have more than one resume. And what I always tell people, and particularly if you guys ever watch my live resume reviews, and you'll hear me say it all the time, your resume is like your cliffhanger. That's your, when you're watching a series, I'm a, I'm a reality t- TV person. I like watching like, you know, Real Housewives and all of those Married to Medicines and stuff like that. The thing that gets me excited is at the beginning of the series, or the beginning of the season, they'll show you like clips of all the hot moments throughout the whole season. That makes me watch the whole season, right? So you're going to do the same thing with your resume. So you want to create resumes that are tailored to whatever job you're applying to. You don't need 10 of them. Just know that you can create like two basic ones. And then you have that third one that you always change for that specific job that really gets your your engines going. You really wanted to work for that company. Somebody told you about this opportunity. It's the salary range that you want. It's the location that you want. And what you'll do is kind of start at the top with putting your header there. And so you'll put that job title there. And so that's super duper big. Obviously a a great, great game changer. So please do it. How can I start to network in college? And it's really, really crazy because you're going to do that in multiple ways. In college, one way that I did that is you can do it with sororities and fraternities. I'm not even in one, but I network with those people, right? I did that in being into extra group, extra classes that might be a little bit of like extracurricular, right? So I did like Spanish conversation classes and I grew like my network with those people in that way. Another thing that you can do is by going to just regular events. Listen, y'all have social media. For us, when I was in college, Facebook had just started. So I grew my network with Facebook when it was just for college students back then. That's a good way. But you guys have all of these individual ways of doing that. Your colleges normally have like career fairs. Don't be afraid to go to another college's career fair or local tech school's career fair. For me personally, I suggest everyone to go and find Facebook groups that are particular to their career field. There's so many of them there. One As a project manager, how do I transition into the HR space? Oh man, you're a project manager. All we do is manage projects all day, honey. So what you're absolutely going to have to do is make sure that you look at that job description and you're going to have to scratch your mind. You're going to have to kind of unlearn what you know. Don't worry about saying, I manage this project in this way. You can say, I partnered with X number of stakeholders and these positions who had X number of people reporting to them, because we want to see that you can do that communication externally and internally. So I'm talking about the software that you've used, because nobody's looking for particularly an exact name that you use. They're looking for you to have a tech acumen that you're not afraid of a software. We put you in the front of a new one. So don't be afraid to start putting things like Tableau or Power BI or what have you. Take your job titles and take out the specifics in those job titles on your resume. So somebody might say a digital project manager, just for project manager, right? Take that out. That's the company's name, but an overall name would be project manager. And what you can also do is make sure to put your skills at the top of your resume versus starting with just your experience. So I always tell people when you're pivoting, use a bit of a summary or a career Um, synopsis, but get away from those objectives, y'all. Y'all ain't trying to accomplish one thing. You accomplishing a lot. So give a bit of a summary. Um, Aspiring human resources professional pivoting from project management into human resources, using my wealth of skills to be a successful um, party for your organization or professional for your organization. And then you want to start listing out those skills. So you already using this software, right? So you're comfortable with AirMeet or Airtable. You're comfortable with Um, Google Meet, if you've ever used that, Zoom, you've ever used that, if you've ever used Google Docs, if you've ever used Microsoft Suite, don't just say Suite, start saying which ones you use. Are you comfortable with PowerPoint, Word, Excel? Like, make sure you start listing those things out and be really detailed on that because you never know how, what, what they're looking for, for you to have some experience in and know that you with that project management skills and those software skills or whatever other um, project you've completed, showing momentum in those bullet points can help you pivot into human resources. Do you have any tips for interviewing and easing nerves? Interviewing and easing nerves. Interviews are so, so different, right? Because now interviews have evolved. We're not just going into an office for interviews and meeting somebody one time and then getting a job offer or not. Now you're looking at multiple interviews. You're looking at them being online. You're looking at them being on the phone. You're looking at them being a different type of video software. You're looking at even doing homework assignments too. So one way to shake nerves for that is I always tell people people to create your elevator pitch. 
I don't care what questions they ask me. If they ask me to introduce myself or they say, to me, you tell me or time you did this, I'll answer that question. I'll tell you how to answer questions. And then I always go for the same elevator pitch. The more you practice it, the more you do it, the more you do it over and over again in front of different people, the more you'll get comfortable with it. And that will kind of shake those nerves because you get more and more comfortable in yourself, right? So the elevator pitch for me has always been like, Hey guys, I'm a human resources professional who's worked in HR for 10 years. I've worked in industries such as, and I list those, and I've worked in positions such as, and I am a person that loves everything in HR, but you can keep me away from payroll. I never want to touch it again. So you just kind of get that elevator pitch and you kill that. And then the, the another way to kind of kill some nerves is to make sure that you create or use a method of answering these questions on every single question. So you always want to make sure that you hit the problem. And then you, the PAR method. So you always want to make sure that you're going for the PAR method. So you want to hit that problem. What's that question they ask you? What's the problem that they want you to solve or show that you've solved? And then you always want to say the action that you've done to solve that problem. And then what was the result? Somebody says, tell me about the time you experienced working with a horrible manager. I say, oh my goodness, I've done it several times. But and, and over time, what we've had, so I'm going to talk about the problem, right? Over time, we've had rough communication. We've had employees that are complaining about them. We've had people who are just burnt out. They really um, suck at communicating with me. They don't respond to HR. And so what I did was to help in these things, and I started telling my actions. I started creating a weekly meeting. I started making sure to ask them, how can I help them? I made it sure to stop moving away from just having these meetings online and started having them more in person. I kept them away from being group meetings to individual meetings. And then as a result, that hiring manager, so now we're getting into my result of the PAR method. That hiring manager got more comfortable with me. She started telling me more of what she was having, like problems at home. I was able to offer EAP services and help her to get to that final result of being a better manager, of working with HR better, of working with her team better, navigating to get her team more comfortable with her. So always go for the PAR method, your elevator pitch. The more you do those things, the more you answer the same questions in the same way. Not only are you showing how amazing you are, but you're killing the nerves, you're killing that imposter syndrome all on the way. Make sure to practice in front of the mirror, practice with your girlfriends. They'll show you your body languages that you may do that they'll be like, no, that look crazy, don't do it. So then you kind of do some practicing. Don't wait to practice before the interview. Practice long before. Like start doing it now. Get that elevator pitch ready now. P pick about three or four different scenarios that you can always use the PAR method for now. Don't wait until the day before the interview. Why are you doing that? You already got the nerves up by the interview. Just kill it now. So that way you're just brushing over that again and you're focusing more on, should I wear this color? Because I definitely want to stay away from like a red or orange or yellow in the interview. So I'll go for my blues. You know, you can start focusing on the things that really doesn't matter as much.